All right, welcome back everybody. In this video, we're gonna do some project setup. So the, the rest of this playlist is going to be building screens from popular apps, but there's a couple shared components that we're gonna use across all of the screens. And I wanna get those out of the way first. So first, like downloading images, we're gonna do that once and then we're gonna reuse it uh, for all of the other videos. Downloading mock data, we're gonna do that in this video and we're gonna set it up so that for the rest of the videos, we already have our mock data ready to go. Let's jump into Xcode and set up our project. And we're back. What's up, everybody? I am back on my computer here. We're going to create a new project for this playlist. Super excited. I very rarely get to create new projects with you guys. In this video, we're just going to do some project setup. We're not going to actually really do any core coding, but we need to set up some things so that the rest of this playlist is seamless. And in the rest of the playlist, we're not focused on setup stuff. So we're going to create an app as we always do. And I'm going to call this one Swiftful, Swiftful Swift UI in practice. That's what I'm going to call it, call it whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and click next, save it where you need to save it on your computer. Let's open up, make this full screen here. Let's get the simulator going. Again, we're going to do some setup here. We're not really going to build any screens. So first and foremost, I want to get some images loading in my app. We're going to load a lot of images, mostly mock images in this course, but I want to create a view so that we can actually just load these images really quickly. And we don't have to worry about that every single time. So first and foremost, I'm going to open up uh, SD web image Swift UI. I did a whole video about this SDK on my channel. It's a image loading SDK. I really perform it really easy to use. And if you want to learn about how to use it, check out that separate video in my channel. But right now we're just going to do a simple implementation. So let's copy the URL here. Let's jump into our project. I'm going to open up the project navigator. Let's go to the project package dependencies, click the plus sign, paste in our URL. Let's go up to the next major version and we'll add the package into the project. Go ahead and add the package to the target. Let's make sure it's in our target by clicking on the target and seeing that it is here in our embedded frameworks and libraries. And now we can use SD Web Image Swift UI in our app. So let's get that going. I'm going to right click the navigator and create a new group. We're going to call this one shared. And there's just going to be some shared resources in here. So throughout this course, we're going to build a bunch of different kind of mini apps and screens. And then we're going to use these shared components across all of those different screens. So just trying to stay organized here. Let's right click, create a new file, a Swift UI view. I'm going to call this one image loader view. What S if you watched the SD web image video on my channel, I talked a little bit about how creating some sort of loader view wrapper to wrap the SDK, it really helps when building apps. And we're going to build a little wrapper for it right now. So it's going to be a pretty simple one. Firstly, let's import SD web image Swift UI. And let's get it going here. We're going to add a web image with a URL. We're not going to do anything fancy. We're going to pass in a URL from a string. And let's pass in a string to this view. So we'll say a var URL string of type string. And I'll set it equal to a blank string for a second. I'm going to go here to pixum.photos.com. This is a website with free photo APIs. And what I'm going to do is we can see here that this is, they have the random image generator here with a height and a width of 200 by 300. If I click it, it goes to a random image. But what I'm going to do is, is copy this and then paste it in my browser. But I'm actually going to also just make sure that it works at maybe 600 by 600. So we get a slightly bigger image. Click that and that looks good. All right. So I'm going to copy that URL. I'm going to come back into my project now and paste that actually. So now we get a random image at this URL. Let's go back to our image loader view really quickly. Here we're going to put in constants.randomImage. We'll paste in our string here. Cool. Let's make this a little bit better. Let's make this dot resizable so that we can change the size of the image. Let's also give it a little loading indicator as it's loading. Let's do dot activity. It's a little spinner while it loads. You can't really see it because it loads so fast. Uh, and then I'm also going to add an aspect ratio onto this. So if we did fit or fill, it will adapt. And just to prove that, what I'm going to do is actually put here maybe a just a frame. I'm going to put a padding of 40 on here. And we'll do a vertical padding as well, dot vertical of 60. 
and I'll add a quick corner radius on the image of maybe 30. And you'll notice that I'm putting the corner radius outside of the loader view. This way I could still have images without a corner radius, but I can also add the images if I want one. So we can see right now that something is, is not really working because we can see that the corner radius is not on this image. If I were to make a rectangle here, I can see that the rectangle works perfectly. So the image was clearly not adapting to the frame of the rectangle. So what I find that an easy way to do in SwiftUI is actually put a rectangle on the screen first. I'll give this an opacity of 0.001 so we can't really see it. And then I'll add an overlay with the web image on top of the rectangle. So now if I put this on the screen, we should be able to see it and it's in the rectangle. And one thing that is unseen here though is that the image is actually still outside of the rectangle. We just can't see it. So for example, if I took out this corner radius, uh, we can see that it's still actually going past the bounds of the rectangle here. So two things that I'm so there's two things that I want to do. Firstly, if there's no corner radius, I still want this image to be clipped to the rectangle. So here I'm going to add a quick clip, just a square clipping to the rectangle. Cool. But even though I'm clipping it, the image is actually still rendering out here. We just can't see it. It's just clipped to the frame. So what that means is basically that image is still tappable out here, even though we can't see it. So what I like to do a little trick here in SwiftUI is actually just make this image that allows hit testing of false. So users can never actually click the image, but when they click on this, they're really clicking on the rectangle behind it. So this is a nice way to really get your image kind of working how you actually expected it. I wish it was a little more out of the box in SwiftUI, but not too hard to fix. Put our corner radius back. We want to inject the aspect ratio. So here I'll create a variable called resizing mode of type content mode. I'll set it equal to fill start. And we'll just put this here. I want to note as we go through this course, I'm going to be making everything in the structs a variable so that we can use the implicit initializer for the structs. And you might be thinking, why not just make this a let? I'm going to explain that really quickly. So firstly, if I keep these as let and I try to make an image loader view, so here I make an image loader view, you'll notice that there's no initializer here. Image loader view, I don't have any initializer here by default, and that's because there's nothing to initialize. These are constants. These are not changing. So if I wanted to add an initializer while these are constants, I could create a quick init here, and then I could add in both of these. But really, if I just make these variables, I now have an implied init in the struct. And so when I call image loader view, I can optionally actually pass in my own values for both of these. And it's optional now. So if I don't pass in something, I can still use this with the default value. Most of the structs from now on, I'm using a variable, which I understand it's not private and there's kind of some nuances there. But in terms of like writing code and writing it fast, this is definitely the best way to do it. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're going with. We got our image loader view set up here. We got a couple more things that we're going to add for our shared components here. Firstly, we're going to download some data from the internet because as we build the screens in this app, I want to actually simulate like we're doing an asynchronous fetch request because it's really easy to build any UI with mock data. But I think when people go from mock data to real data, it often poses problems, especially for new developers. So I think if by, by basing this entire course on downloading asynchronous data, we can much more easily like see how this is going to work in a real app configuration. So now let's download some fake data and get that ready for the rest of these videos. All right. So we got two APIs that we're going to call. So firstly, let's right click and create another new file here in the shared folder. It's going to be a Swift file, I'm not going to have any sort of view here. And I'm going to call this database helper. So it's not going to be any sort of like manager class. It's just going to be a quick little struct that we can use to create a struct here and call it database helper. In here, I'm going to create a func called get product. It will be asynchronous and throws and it will return us an array. We'll make it an array of string for now, but we're going to actually add in a product here. And then right now, I'll just add a blank string. Firstly, let's get the URL that we're going to download from. So I'm going to go to a website here, dummyjson.com. 
That should be public. You guys should be able to use this yourself. But they have a bunch of APIs that are really easy to use. Products, carts, users. So we're going to be using the products and the users fetch requests in this series. So I'm going to click on this and we can see the JSON that actually comes through the products. So this is the URL right here. I'm going to copy it and come back into my code. Firstly, let's get the URL. We'll say guard let URL equals URL from a string. Paste in the string here. Else, and we'll just throw URL error, bad URL. We don't get a URL. Again, I'm moving fast here because we're, this is not the stuff that we're focused on in this playlist. We're just doing setup. We're going to say try await URL session shared, trying to get data from this URL. When I look at this, if I hold the option button and click on it, we can see that this returns a tuple with data and URL response. So we'll say let put in parentheses data and URL response equals that. Let's call this lowercase to data. And the response we're not going to do anything with, so I'll just leave it as an underscore for now. All right, let's try to convert the data that we get back from the URL into an array of products. If I open up the products URL, we have all this data, but what kind of data is this? We don't really know. We're going to copy this. I'm going to jump to quicktype.io, which is another website for converting JSON into Swift. Let's open up QuickType. I'm just going to delete everything in here and paste in the product information. So here we can see the, the type. So here we can see the data type that we're going to get back. I'm just going to copy that back into my project and we're going to paste it down here for now. We'll change it in a second. I've used this, I've used this API before. It gives us a, this struct here, which, in, which includes an array of products. And this is a single product. So we don't need this mark, uh, but let's call this a product array just to be a little more explicit. So when we get this data, let's try to convert it into product array. So we'll say let product equals, let's try open up a JSON decoder and we will decode this uh, to a product array dot self. Self here referring to the type that is product array. We're going to do it from the data, of course. And this will throw an error if it fails, but if it succeeds, we're going to get the products. And let's try to return an array of product here. So this products array, we're going to return an array of product. So we'll return products.product. .product. Cool. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but for another fetch request. So I'm just going to copy this quickly and paste it down here. This one we'll call get users. Asynchronous function that throws, and it's going to return us an array of users. So let's open back up our dummy JSON website. I'm going to click on users this time. We have the URL here. Let's paste that in our project here, users. Let's copy the users. Let's open up our other website. Let's delete the products. Let's paste in the users. And it's going to be a very similar stru structure. The users actually have a lot of data in the API, as you guys can see here. And we're not worried about most of this data. It's way more than we need. So I'm just going to copy the the user and the welcome struct here. So the top two, let's copy it, jump back to our project, come down here, just create a little break, and then we're going to paste in welcome and the user. All right, let's clean this up quickly. Uh, firstly, again, this is an array of users. Let's call this user array. And just for our sake, we do not care about the maiden name. We do not care about the gender. Email, phone, user, and password, maybe. Birth date, we're not going to use. Image, we'll keep. Blood group, we definitely don't need. Height, weight. Height and weight, we might use. I doubt it. But eye color, hair, address, university, all this stuff we don't really need. So I'm just going to delete. All right. User array, array of users. And when we come up here, we're going to return an array of user. This will, will decode into a user array. I'll call this users and we will return users dot the value from here. All right, before we move forward, let's delete these marks. Let's clean up our code. I'm going to right click the navigator, create a new file and call this one product. This will be like our data model. I'm going to cut the product and the products array, paste them in here. 
I right click, create another new file. Let's call this one user. Go back and I'm going to cut the user array. Paste them in user, just keeping our code nice and clean and organized. Let's go back to our database helper. We got both of our functions going here. Super simple. We're not going to do any kind of crazy networking. We're basically just going to fetch products and users on all of our screens and then just use this fake mock data to display on our screens. Let's make sure both of these work before we wrap up this video. I'm going to jump into the content view quickly. Let's try to get, let's try to fetch both of these. So let's add a quick task here and I will create a little private funk called get data. It will be asynchronous and we'll open the brackets. So we'll await get data. On the screen, let's just put at state private var users of type array of user. Set it equal to a blank array at state private var products of type array of product. Set it equal to a blank array. Task will trigger as soon as the screen appears. We're going to call get data. And let's just do our classic do catch. First, let's try to get the users. So we'll say users equals try await database helper dot get users products equals try await database helper get product. All right, just to check, just to check that these are working. This is not our actual code for our app on the screen here. I'm going to do a, let's do a quick scroll view. We will do a V stack. We'll do for each users. And we'll make this user in, and then we'll just put on the screen here, a quick user dot, let's go first name. All right. looks like users are not identifiable. Let's see if they can be, let's jump into user. It already has an ID. So it's actually just conformed to identifiable as well. Jump back here, see if this works again. We're just making sure that the users load. Looks like they do. That's awesome. And let's do the same thing for products. We'll go product, put a product on the screen. And we're just going to go product dot title, otherwise blank string. All right. Again, products are not identifiable. Let's see if we can make them identifiable. They have an ID, so we can actually just make them identifiable. Let's jump back and make sure that it works. All right. Products are on the screen as well. Both of these fetch requests are working. And we're not going to actually use this screen, so we're going to delete it in a future video, but I'll just leave the code here for now because we know it's working. And the last thing we're going to do here is import two packages that I have made myself. So if you go to my GitHub on Swiftful Thinking, for those of you who don't know, all of the code for all of the videos on my playlist are on GitHub. I'm not trying to hide anything here. You guys are welcome to access and use any of it. But I have two packages, one for routing and one for just UI components that we're going to use in this playlist. I've covered both of these on my channel previously. These are going to help me just code faster and not spend a ton of time on like tiny little things. Let's import both of these. I'm going to go Swiftful UI first. Let's copy the URL. Again, I've covered both these on my channel. So if you don't know what they're doing, check out the individual videos on the channel. Screw jump back to our project package dependencies. I'm going to paste in Swiftful UI. Let's make sure we're using like 1.0 to less than 2.0. Add the package to the target. Let's make sure that it is in the target here. Bang. Do one more quickly. Let's jump back. We're going to go into Swiftful routing. Copy the URL here. This package is so awesome. You guys should really check it out if you have not. Go back to our project. Go to our package dependencies. Paste in the routing framework here. This one, make sure you're doing 5 to less than 6. Some changes are coming to 6.0 that might be breaking. So 5 to less than 6 should be good for this playlist. Let's add that in. Add that package as well. Make sure it's in our target. Looks like it's there. Let's go to our content view. Just make sure they're both here. So import Swiftful UI. Import Swiftful routing. Make sure that this works. The screen still loads, so clearly this compiled. All right, that is all that we are going to do in this video. It's just some project setup. The reason we did this is because now we can very quickly load some fake data on all of our screens, and we are set to rock and roll in the next bunch of videos. Thank you guys for watching. I apologize if this setup was a little bit of an annoyance. 
but it will be worth it as we get into some of the cool stuff in the next couple of videos. Thank you all for watching. As always, my name is Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.